From a weekly listener, love the show. Truly a highlight every week. I'll keep my question short. I know NIL has been left up to the schools and the states, and honestly, it seems really out of control. I've seen some bipartisan talks about federal NIL laws, but no real action. Are you guys in support of federal laws for NIL? What would NIL laws even look like? Love the show, Jake. This op-ed from Swarbrick in the New York Times, was it in his drafts? And he forgot to send it like because it seems like a take that's about a year old, right? <laughs> or yeah. it's a take that's been going on for six or seven or 50 years. Like it just seems like and a lot of it's very much Captain Obvious. It's like it's I mean, pretty it's pretty pretty rich coming from a, a school that has its own TV contract, right? Yeah. And from a guy from a guy that's made millions of bucks off unpaid college athletes. Um so a, I don't think they're going to get a federal NIL bill passed. I, I talked to somebody about this the other day, and I think the optimism on this is unwarranted. Uh, I think you have several several Republicans who will not vote for this because they don't feel like it's a federal issue. And you can have almost pretty good certainty that almost all the Democrats are not going to vote for Tommy Tuberville's bill because it basically is like, hey, let's treat the players like shit. So... I don't think that they're going to get anything close to the current proposed version passed. Now, the things that they are trying to do with this, right, are prevent NIL from being used in recruiting, which basically is like, let's let's keep all the money that people want to give for ourselves through the booster clubs, which we can pay employees with. Speaking of employees, they want explicit acknowledgement that players are not employees, right? They want the antitrust exemption, and they also want players to prevent uh, or to be prevented from suing for retroactive NIL. Those are kind of the four main things. And then they want preemption, which preemption means federal law is the law of the land. All your state laws that conflict with this don't count. That's the general like five things that they're trying to put through. That's from what, not, I, what I've read. I, so Swarbrick wants, and he, he didn't say that this would specifically come from um, the federal legislation, but Swarbrick wants reporting on all NIL transactions. Uh, Jack Swarbrick wants... Wasn't that uh, that supposed to be in originally? Wasn't that like in the original guidelines from like two years ago? I thought it was something we're all going to know. It was all going to be out front. They don't have to to tell you what coaches are making, but they have to tell you every single deal that a kid signs? Come on. Literally from a private university. Yeah, it's not enforceable. Like Swerver can want it till the cows come home, but it, it's it's not going to happen. Yeah, he he wants reporting on transactions. He wants to require there to be transactions, aka Swerver says it is the school's obligation to ensure that any transaction between an athlete and a booster is a transaction which the athlete contributes nil value and the compensation reflects quote reasonable market value. I am not. Is that price fixing? Because yes. <laughs> like yeah, that, that's why they want the antitrust. Um, Congress. He wants the NCAA, NCAA to create policies, not guidelines, because that's right. Currently, there are policies, not guidelines, uh, so guidelines, not policies. And he wants them to enforce. And then, like, he did that thing where he also rolled out a couple of um, things that he believes that the NCAA and college athletics should do that are, are probably not going to get a lot of pushback. He wants a, a national class miss policy that limits travel to avoid missing too many classes. Um, good. So, sounds good at, at heart, I guess. Uh, he wants a national medical trust fund for players who are injured playing college sports. Yeah, no one's going to say like no to that. There's just going to be someone says, okay, where's the money coming from? And then he wants to honor scholarship for athletes who wish to return and complete their degree. I feel like that happens a lot. That's a yeah. school choice. Like, Schools already do that. So I'm it 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 is um inter- I'm glad Bud that you were able to to bring in the expertise on the the legal side of this because I've never understood how it is of the interest of the United States Congress to create federal laws which will try to police the ongoing of college athletes being compensated particularly in the wake of the Austin case when you're dealing with a 9-0 decision by the Supreme Court, the High Court of the Land, in which some of the opinions from sitting Supreme Court justices uh, very much picked apart the amateurism model. Regulation for thee, not for me, is essentially what Swerberg's article comes down to. Like, Notre Dame's a private university. He does not have to, not have to report what he makes, right? 
but he wants all these athletes to report what they make mm-hmm. Doesn't have from to tell you somebody who's not connected made. to Notre Dame. Yeah, he no, just, we, he just hired a new basketball coach yesterday. He does not have to tell you how much money he gave him to do so. Yeah. And so the the Democrats also have an NIL bill. Cory Booker and, and some other senators are, are involved with that one. I also think that's probably DOA. So I just the sides are very far apart on, on what's being proposed. Um and generally in the media, I think very recently too, like some people who are involved in the, in the NIL space were like, yeah, this is going to get passed. And I was like, for, who's voting for this? And then about a month later, the, the guy texts me back. I was like, oh yeah, not, probably not happening, dude. So Do you of- think that there is enough momentum within the college sports industry for there to be changes to the way that, you know, NIL is like the, the process, like if, if there are to be NCAA rules to be passed or if, you know, as, as we're spinning forward and looking at the, the future of college athletics, if there would be some kind of, you know, regulation that's coming or, or a way that the concerns of those who are freaking out are, are somewhat lessened. I think it'll come through the courts and not through Congress by the courts to saying eventually that these guys are employees. And thus, like if you want to reduce NIL quite a bit, and make it simply about marketing value and not about their actual value to the roster, make them employees, right? I think that the courts will probably force their hand. Like if I had to bet on it, I think that they'll be ruled employees long before we get federal NIL bailout legislation and and all all this. This is kind of a pipe dream. And it's really smart PR but for, for a couple of reasons. One, the NCAA now gets to be like, hey, Congress could like, Everybody loves blame Congress for not acting on stuff. The NCAA now gets to do that. Like I don't think the NCAA really believes they're going to get this thing passed. I'd be kind of surprised if internally they actually think it will get passed. And number two, a lot of these guys who are proposing this stuff are dudes who have made a bunch of money off this game. And I don't think they really care about the sport 10 or 15 years from now. If you're Swarbrick, you just turn 69 years old. Get get a couple more years of fat paychecks and then dip, right? Like, I think he's trying to, to make sure this model of revenue for him and his buddies continue for the next couple of years until he can re- like just dip. Mm. Do you think there's any like idyllic? I've liked the way, you know, that like just looking at it from the purest standpoint of, Oh, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a pure sport. Is there any, I mean, I know it sounds delusional, but do you think there's any of that? Or do you think it really isn't protecting the cronies no. and protecting the money? It, Schwarber actually tells on himself here. He goes, "This is amateurism." Like, oh, the the thing about it being like a ridiculous. Um, oh, uh, he says these guys have always been getting paid like this. It just wasn't out in the public. We did it, we just did it <laughs> under the table. Now now we call it nil. So he's not even pretending that they were amateurs behind the scenes. He just doesn't like the the image of it. it it's not even a an ideal idealist thing. It, it's a just PR. He speaks out against amateurism in the piece. He said, uh, here's from, uh, this is from my notes. I apologize that it's not the exact quote. I've got a couple in here. Uh, Swarbrick does think that NCAA should not stick to a pure amateurism model. Said the NCAA has wasted time and wasted energy defending amateurism. And he called it, quote, a ridiculous proposition. In this piece, he is wow. calling amateurism a ridiculous Wait. proposition, and this is from Swarbrick. Quote, no one ever said that the babysitter's experience would be better if we didn't pay him or her. I don't want them to be amateurs, but I also don't want them to be paid. Because uh, the NIL is best of both worlds for them. That's why I'm surprised they're fighting it and trying to put restrictions on it. Like they, That's the dirty little secret in all of this is that that was a pretty good compromise for them. But now that they've seen it's kind of, a, oh, it's a lot. And I do think they wonder what it means for their pay. If like if people figure out, oh, we should stop donating to the school and give it actually mm-hmm. the players, which we're seeing happen. I think that's what they're more worried about. I think that ridiculous proposition is actually a quote that's pulled from the Supreme Court opinion. It might be. I, I've I've heard that before. So it's e- it's either in somebody's somebody's brief or because um, the the one tone in Brett Kavanaugh when he put his decision out there. And the Alston was, I mean, good luck to the NCA forever not trying to pay him. Like it's gonna happen. Question, uh, follow up question from the chat from David: Is the op-ed piece actually an admittance of having a subpar NIL program? Yes, <laughs> that's, that's a joke. I think maybe with some truth. Who knows? 